Good morning, students. So, okay. so we'll continue the diffraction for some time for five to ten minutes. Then we'll start the new chapter. Okay. So, in diffraction, how many types of diffractions are there? So, two types of diffractions. The first one is Fraunhofer's diffraction, and the second one is Preston's diffraction. We have seen that. So, Fraunhofer's diffraction completely it is done. Okay, and uh, Preston's diffraction something is there. We will see for a minute or so, not that much important. And uh, we will see the differences between the interference and diffraction. So, then we will start the next chapter. Okay. So now diffraction almost it is done. So what type of diffraction we study? What type of diffraction? Fraunhofer's diffraction. Fraunhofer's diffraction we study, right? So Fraunhofer's diffraction. Everything we study, red bands, dark bands, everything. Now in that, so graph. We didn't do time based model, so we are going on. Okay, so graph for the what for intensity, for intensity and the, the angle. So some question will say right sin theta, some question will say right just theta theta. So we calculated this theta for the right bands and as well as for the dark bands. Now try to revise the concept quickly. So intensity, this is the central bright band. Or is it point? Yes, that is the central bright band. So at central prime band, what will happen? Intensity will be maximum below. Then the first minimum, first the secondary minimum. Then what will happen? Dark spot will get. Next again dark spot. What will happen? The intensity decreases. And in Hinks double set experiment, what will happen? So that will be the same. Try to see that graph. The intensity and the width will be same. But here the intensity completely will be decreases. So how it will decrease? We'll see now. So assume uh, at the central bright band intensity is I0, maximum. Maximum intensity at I0. Now what will happen? So first minimum on the both sides will be there or not? Where will get first minimum? At positive side it will be lambda by D or A and at the negative side it will be minus lambda by D. So we derive all the things. We have to understand all these things right now. Okay, so it will be minus, this distance also should be same. Yes or no? This distance should be same. So this will be minus lambda by d. Yes or no? Distance also should be same. Linear width in the positive side, linear width in the negative side should be same. Next, after uh, uh, the dark spot, again bright spot will be there. Yes or no? Then again dark spot will be there. Where it will be 2 lambda by d. So now n lambda by d already we studied. So it will be minus 2 lambda by d. So in between that what will be there? So lambda 2 lambda in between 1.5 lambda. Here also 1.5 lambda, 3 by 2 lambda. Here maximum will be there. So we can draw it up. See? So this is the way the curve will be. So maximum intensity I not at what? At the central right band. Next at lambda by d minimum. So intensity will be zero. So here minus lambda by d again intensity will be zero. See. So again, again dark spot will be there. So dark spot from the dark spot again the intensity increases which tell you. Yes or no? Yes. Right? So again what will happen? For example, if I take as 3 lambda by d, so intensity compared to this will be decreases. Right? So now coming to here, minus lambda by d, minus 2 lambda by d. Now what will happen? The same intensity should be there, yes or no? So same intensity should be there. Right? So again, same intensity should be there. So here minus 3 lambda by d. So this is the intensity curve. 
So already the story we know. So at the central red band intensity will be maximum. Then at first the secondary minimum will be the dark spot. Second, second, third. Now in between I can write here minus three by two lambda by d. Here maximum intensity minus five by two lambda by d. Sorry, this plus and minus this side. So it is minus three by two lambda by d and again minus five by two lambda by d. So this is the graph for intensity and the angular separation. Intensity and angular separation. Intensity decreases. So you have to show this. Right? Clear about the point? So this is the curve for, for hand Kramhofer's diffraction. Right. So next. So everything about Kramhofer's diffraction we studied, nothing we left. So this is about Fraunhofer's diffraction. Next, two types of diffractions we studied, right? So one is the Fraunhofer's diffraction already is done. Now Fresnel's diffraction. Fresnel's diffraction. So just for one mark or two marks question, uh, most it is important. Okay. So we'll see the definition. That's it. Nothing more than that. So, Fresnel's diffraction. What is Fraunhofer's diffraction? So, we have to consider the source, slit, and steel are at infinite distance. Source, slit, and steel are at infinite distance. To maintain the infinite distance, what we did? We consider the lens. Convex lens, right? So, here in Fresnel's diffraction, it won't be at infinite. Source, screen, uh, and slit won't be at infinite distance. It will be at finite distance. And this diffraction occurs at a narrow slit. Let me show This type of diffraction, same, same like uh, the previous uh, definition what I have written for uh, uh, Fran Bobbers, the same thing. This type of diffraction occurs at slit or narrow slit. At a narrow slit when when uh, there are parallel rays here, so it is a non parallel rays. This is non parallel rays passes through it, passes through it or through the slit. So, there, what is the difference? See that? So then also slit we can say so non-parallel rays. This is important. There parallel rays here it will be non-parallel rays passing through the slit. How is this possible? See now. So one slit we have to cancel or two slits. One slit we know, right? So now assume source at finite distance or infinite distance. Finite distance here. So if this finite distance, how the wavelengths will go? Spherical wavelengths we know that. So light rays in the sense they go like this. So these are the light rays. How the spherical wave friends will go from the point source? How it will die go? There will be the spherical wave friends. We already studied about that. Now what will happen? These again they will bend at the, the corners of the slit or not? Definitely they will bend at the corners of the slit. So what will happen again? Dark spots and bright spots will be formed on the screen. So this study of the source slit and the steel, which is at the finite distance. Is called as Presnell's diffraction. Simple. It's a study of what? Source, so slit, and the skin. If it is finite distance, how the dark bands and bright bands will be formed? That study given by the Presnell and that type of diffraction we call as Presnell's diffraction. Clear about the point? So, here, yeah, second point, what you have to remember is the source, slit, and screen should be at finite distance should be finite distance just for two marks so nothing much to study it is there to study but according to your syllabus it is not there because it is little dif difficult compared to the prime opus refraction prime opus strike arrays are going right so it is easy to study so here it's not strike so, so studying this crystal refraction is little difficult. We will study in the higher education, not in the previous syllabus. It is not there. So for concrete exams also, it is not there. Don't worry about this. Right? So crystals 
Long parallel is finite distance. Try to understand this. It's done. Right? Steady is there, but in your field syllabus, it's not included. Right? These are the two types of diffractions. It's about the two types of diffractions. Right? So, next, uh, for five minutes, we'll discuss about the differences between the interference and diffraction. So, in Ellis double set experiment, we have seen about interference, and now in diffraction, we have seen about the diffraction pattern. So, we'll see some differences, very important. Interference. And diffraction. So, first point, what do you mean by interference? Answer yourself. So, now you have to answer yourself. Else, uh, up to now, what we discussed, you didn't understand. So, what do you mean by interference? What do you mean by diffraction? So, both are superposing of waves only, but superposing of waves by the two different sources we call it as interference. What do you mean by interference? Interference is nothing but the superposition of the superposition of two waves, two waves from the two different sources are from the same source. Coming from will be better or from two different sources. Two different coherent sources, or just you can write it as sources. What type of sources? Coherent sources, we know that. So, what do you mean by diffraction? Diffraction pattern we can say that yeah, the superposition of two waves. Yes or no? Superposition of two waves from the two different sources are from the same source. Or from the same source. Superposition of two waves, I think you can write. Superposition of uh, uh, two waves from the same source. From the same source. Same source, how it is possible? We call it as secondary wavelengths. We call it as secondary wavelengths, right? So, as it has superposition, okay? Superposition of two waves from the same source. From the same source and from the same wavefront. If you want, you can write it as same source and from the same wavefront. So, but if the same wavefront, what is that? It is called as secondary wavelengths. Same story, right? Second point. So, what will be the width of the bright and the dark bands? Here, the width, fringe width. You can call it as fringe width. Okay. So, instead of writing width, we can write it as fringe width of the bands will be same. Fringe width of the bands will be same. In the sense, the width, width of the bright bands and dark bands will be same here in interference in YDSC. But here in diffraction, here in the diffraction, fringe width, uh, they will be same or different? Will be different. Just now we have seen. Will be different. It won't be same. Tell about the point. It won't be same. It will be different. Now here, the bands, number of dark and the bright bands will be more, formed more. So what I can tell? The number of bands, what it is forming on the screen will be more. Now here, so I have shown, so maybe two or three dark bands and two or three bright bands I have shown, not more. But here it is not like that. So number of bands, what it will form on the screen will be more. But here, bands what it will form compared to the interference will be less. Compared to the interference will be less. Why in the sense you have seen the experiment. So in that experiment uh, the basic important differences we are discussing now. So the fringe width will be same and the fringe width will be different. Alright. And the bands will be more and the bands will be less. And what about intensity? Intensity, I have shown for interference, 4i0, again 4i we got, not 3i we got. So I, I think we have seen on the screen. So first it is uh, 4i, next 0, next again 4i, next again 0, and the same spot. The intensity for the dark and the bright bands will be same. 
4 m again for right hand how much is the intensity again 4 m you know it's not like it stopped to 3 m it came to 4 m so intensity will be same but here we have seen the curve intensity first i not now the second maximum also will get it i not only no it's decreased right so i can tell the intensity intensity will be different less also correct but exactly we can write it as different here it is same for all the right and the dark bands but intensity here it will be different so these are the major differences with more or less but enough so superposition of the two different sources same source right so intensity will be same it will be different and here bands will be more bands will be less and here intensity will be same for all the bright bands intensity will be different for the bright bands we have seen everything now and we have written it as a difference right so this is the difference between interference and diffraction clear about the points right what we know the same i have written nothing new here i think so right right next next topic so with this this wave optics chapter is done so according to the new syllabus according to the new syllabus the remaining parts what is there from here so like polarization and some loss are there so all those things they are removed so according to the new syllabus we are discussing so wave optics according to the new syllabus is done now going to the next chapter modern physics very easy like heat in the first year okay so like heat this topic is also very easy part so but you have to practice more as well so formulas also very less nothing more to discuss about this but it's there nothing more in the sense it's not nothing is there so it's there but we will discuss first of all what are the topics are there in modern physics you will see the topics okay so first you have to discuss about photoelectric effect photo okay so photoelectric effect. Next about matter waves. Next about atomic structure. Don't worry, not chemistry atomic structure. It's a little, little different, right? So next X-rays. Next. about uh, the study of nucleus so nuclear physics so can i write the study of nucleus nuclear physics and the last topic it is a sub part of nuclear physics that is nothing but uh, the radioactivity so these are the parts we have to discuss in modern physics don't worry it's not in a single chapter so photoelectric effect and matter waves comes under dual relation of matter and radiation matter and radiation so these two things uh, comes under atomic physics right so these two things comes under nuclear physics so after the semiconductor topic is also there okay it also comes in the modern physics only but majorly we will discuss these three parts if anyone asks you about the modern physics right so dual nature atomic physics and the nuclear physics. so these six topics are very important but according to the new syllabus something they removed will remove that uh, what they removed and we will discuss the remaining things 
this. Okay, so today we will start dual nature of matter basics in modern physics, right? So dual nature of matter basics we will start. Right, more stories will be there in modern physics. You have to understand all the stories. Alright, first story. First story. Okay. So, dual nature. Dual nature of matter. So, come to the story. Okay. So, dual nature of matter and radiation. Just I will call it as dual nature. Don't worry about that. Dual nature, what do you mean by it? the name? Dual nature, in the sense, dual, two, two natures are there. So, two natures, by seeing this, the name only we can tell, dual nature, two natures of what? Of matter. So, matter in the sense, according to our present story, we will consider light, for example, we will consider light. So, now, in this chapter, now in the first five ten minutes, uh, we will discuss the introduction of this story, how from there it came. Okay, so we will discuss about that. Right. So, dual nature, in the sense, two natures. What are those? So, one is the particle nature, and the other one is wave nature of light. So, generally, dual nature of matter, whatever the matter it might be. So, who said all these things, sir? Slowly we will get, don't worry about that. Dual nature. What are those two types of natures? One is the particle nature of the matter. And the other one is the very nature of the matter. Okay. So this topic, whatever the topic it might be in physics according to your syllabus, started by whom? Started by Newton. Almost all the things. Almost. Not everything. Almost. So this topic also started with Newton. So I think the theories are not we studied. I am not uh, uh, going into the theories already in the wave of things. We studied about the theories. Just let me tell you what happened to get into this chapter. What happened in the meeting? So what is that meeting we will see? Okay. So just it's an imaginary meeting, not exactly it's done or not, I don't know. Right? So assume Newton started this part. So what he said actually, what he said actually? So light is made up of some particles called corpuscles and the theory name uh, given by the Newton is Newton's corpuscular theory. I think we know about that. So Newton said the light is made up of particles called corpuscles and the theory is nothing but Newton's corpuscular theory. So I am not telling you much about that because already you know about that. Now what I am telling is Newton he said about this and finally he concluded that light is having the particle nature. This is important. Light is having what? Particle nature. He said light having so light have the particle nature. So according to Newton why he said light is having the particle nature or light have the particle nature? So he said and imaginary particles. He created that and he said corpuscles. Corpuscles is nothing but a particle, right? So finally he concluded that light will have a light that has a particle nature. Right? So now next science. We will discuss about all the things. Now the scientists and all will be divided into two parts. So up to now they work together. Now a meeting is there, in that meeting they will be divided into two parts. Some scientists will uh, be satisfied with this particle nature of the light, some scientists will be satisfied with the wave nature of the light. Now the debate will be there, we have to discuss about that. Okay? So Newton, corpuscles, Newton's corpuscular theory, and the key, what is that? Particle nature will be there for the light. Okay. Next, next, who came Huygens? So we studied. In the previous chapter, in the wave optics, we studied about the Huygens principle. So he demonstrated the reflection and refraction of light, particle nature, wave nature. Wave nature. Clear about the point? Huygens principle in the wave optics, we studied. What we studied? What we studied? So he demonstrated Huygens, according to the principle, he demonstrated the reflection and refraction of light. What you can write? He demonstrated what? The reflection. And refraction of light 
Wave nature or particle nature of reflection and refraction? Wave nature. So, wave nature of light. So, in the demonstrated reflection and refraction of light by using what? Wave nature of light. By using wave nature of light. Now, in which group higher will come? Wave group. Newton, particle group. Next, should more theories are there? Next, another scientist called Maxwell. Okay, so not Australian batsman. Okay, so scientist. Scientist called Maxwell, right? So, Maxwell, what he did is, so he developed the electromagnetic wave. So, Maxwell, what is his contribution in physics? He had developed the electromagnetic waves. Name itself is. Light is also an electromagnetic wave. So, in which group Maxwell will come? Wave group. So, he also supported the Huygens wave nature of light. He also supported the Huygens wave nature of light. Huygens wave nature of light. Who supported Maxwell? Supported wave nature of light. Next, uh, Max Planck. Max Planck, what is his contribution is he did some experiments on black body radiations. He did some experiments on black body radiations. I think in the 11th feet we discussed about this black body radiations in 11th feet, right? So, all those things are on these experiments done by whom? Done by Max Planck. So, now finally he concluded that. So light is having or matter is having the particle nature. So according to him, he said about the particle nature and he supported the Newton's things. Next, finally, Einsteinian. Einstein, what is his contribution equals to mc square? We know that. So according to this modern physics, he did a photoelectric effect. In that, in that, he supported again to particle nature itself. So now, like this, many more scientists are there. So now we will uh, restrict our discussion only after these scientists and we will make it better. So Newton, Huygens, Maxwell, Max Planck and Einstein. So they divide into two groups and they are discussing. So particle nature, who is supporting? Newton. Newton supporting particle nature and as well as Max Planck and Einstein. Three members that said, okay. So next, Heiken, Maxwell. Two members this said and they are fighting. So right, uh, he is having the particle nature. He is showing his proofs and Heiken and uh, uh, Maxwell. They are showing their proofs that uh, uh, light is having the wave nature. So they are fighting continuously by showing their theories and all. Okay, so now in between one hand raised, not mine, in between one hand raised, his name is De Broglie. Right? So in between this debate, many more scientists also there, they are watching all the things. In between one hand raised in that meeting, so the name of the scientist is De Broglie. Name of the scientist is okay. So name of the scientist is D. Broglie. What he said? So in between he raised the hand and he said, "Are you right? Don't fight. Are you right? Don't fight." So what he said is, "Don't fight." So light is having the dual nature. So, light is having dual nature, he said. He supported Newton, what you will describe. In a sense, some changes. So, according to the Newton's laws, theory, some changes required. So, according to them, particle nature is also there. He supported that. And he supported the other group, wave nature group also. And he said finally, dual nature is there. So, particle nature will be there. And as well as wave nature also will be there. He said, don't fight. So, two natures will be there for a light. So, what is the particle nature also possibility will be there, and the wave nature also possibility will be there, he said. Now, generally, what people will do? 
So either we have to support to one side or to the other side. Now he is at the middle, he supported both. Now they stopped fighting and they asked more questions to De Broglie. They stopped fighting and they asked to De Broglie, how is it possible? So you have to combine the two theories and you have to tell me now the new theory. Start telling about the new theory which the life is supported to both particle nature and as well as brain nature. This is the actual story of this chapter called Dual Nature of Matter. So now De Broglie will explain why the particle and the brain nature will be there for the life. For that, simply he said, right? simply he said, life is made up of very important point. So life is made up of Light is made up of the small particles, small particles called photons. Light is made up of small particles called photons. He gave a new name for the particles. So the name is nothing but photons. Name is nothing but what? Photons. Now we have to discuss everything about the photons. If light is coming, if light is coming from a source, so now according to this chapter, from now we will see the light. But with the light, some particles also will come. You can observe those particles, right? So those particles, according to uh, De Broglie, he gave a name called photons. Now light is coming. Now we have to change that sentence. What we have to tell? Photons are striking the surface. So photons are coming from the source. Is that clear? Instead of calling it as light, from now we will call it as a photons. So photons coming from the from the source and strikes any surface. What will happen? Clear? Now about the photons also we have to study. We will study the properties of the photons and uh, let me come back to the dual nature. So how we can tell the dual nature will be there for the matter? So in a sense, he said he developed a new term called photon. And he said, concentrate, next point. And he said, so momentum of the photon, momentum, very important point here. So what he said, the major thing is about the momentum. So momentum of the photon, of one photon, and I like everything, momentum of one photon, see, only one particle, more particles will come, infinite number of particles will come. So now we have to see only one photon, see, one photon is coming. And striking the surface. What will happen now? We will see later. So, if it is coming in the sense, it should have some momentum. So, he is talking about that momentum of that photon. So, which is equal to H by lambda. Very, very, very important point. So, he said momentum of the photon, which is equal to H by lambda. Now, this formula you can apply either for the particle nature or for the wave nature. So they did the big big theories, big big experiments and they are fighting. He said with a simple formula, why people are fighting? Say momentum which is equal to h by lambda. So with this formula, if you want the particle nature, you can. If you want the wave nature, you can. So how is it possible? So P is momentum of that particle. Momentum of that particle. If you want the particle nature as the final result, you have to use P equals to h by lambda. If you want the wave nature, just change this. Lambda equals to h by p. Simply he said, p equals to h by lambda is the relation for particle nature and the wave nature of the matter, of the light. Okay? So, if you want the particle nature, substitute lambda here. Or if you want wave nature as a result, so substitute h by p. So, we will get wave nature with this, we will get the wave nature. And with this, we will get the particle nature. And the relation between the particle nature and the wave nature is P equals to H by lambda. Clear about that point? Still more doubts will be arise for you. So again we will see what is the de Broglie's hypothesis everything in the matter waves. In the next topic called matter waves, again the contribution for this lambda equals to H by P, we have to see. So now most of you will get it out, sir. Particle nature and wave nature, how is it possible? For example, a car is moving. Okay, a car is moving with a speed of uh, a 50 meter per second. A car is moving. Okay, so now that is a particle, sir. It is not, it will move in a straight line path or it will dance. It will move in a straight line path. 
Yes or no? So now we will get it out. Sir, that is a particle. So both particle itself and wave itself, that particle should exhibit no. Now the particle, now the car is moving in a straight line path, whether it will dance or it will move with the straight line path. Definitely it will move with the straight line path. We know that. So why they will move with the straight line path? It depends on the wavelength. It depends on the wavelength of the particle. Try to understand this continuation things we will see in the matter waves. We will see the matter waves. Up to that time, please try to remember this. That example, again I will tell why the car will go with the strike line, why it won't dance. It depends on the wavelength. And the mass of the particle, concentrate, right? and the mass of the particle is comparable to the wavelength. That is the condition here. If mass is comparable to the wavelength, very small, then those type of particles will exhibit the dual nature. Not that car. Clear about that point? Not that car. Why? Because mass is too big. So we can't cancel those type of particles. Now, if I cancel a photon, if I cancel an electron, mass will be too less. Mass will be too less. So while they are moving, they won't move straight. They will dance and they will move. So this is the story given by whom? Given by the David Rowley. Particle nature, given nature, given by this formula, which is the equal stage by Lambert. Now he is trying to explain like this. Now try to understand one more scientist he got up and he did like this. Sir, you said about momentum, okay? Try to understand one more scientist, not the group. The group is trying to explain like this. Now one more scientist he raised the hand and he came to the dais and he is trying to do something. What he did please? So momentum formula we know mass into velocity. Momentum formula we know as mass into velocity. Okay. So mass I can write, momentum according to the de Broglie reason you said it as h by lambda. So we will write it as h by lambda which is equals to mv. So mass of the photon I will write as lambda by v, h by v times of lambda. So one scientist he got up and he came and he said, sir uh, you said about the photons but you are not talking about that mass of the photon. So can I calculate the mass of the photon with this formula m which is equal to h by v tens of lambda? De Broglie said at the next instant absolutely wrong. Otherwise I doubt that particle, I know about the mass of that particle, you shall have it. Okay, so m which is equal to h by v tens of lambda, we can't apply to calculate the mass of that photon. So generally you also, if you are thinking more, you can write like this and you can tell Oh, mass of the photon will be h by of lambda, that is absolutely wrong We can't tell like that So according to De Broglie again, the mass of the photon Rest mass of the photon is zero Try to understand? So like if we switch off, no particles are there If no particles are there, what will be the mass? Mass will be zero So all these things we will discuss So rest mass of the photon will be equals to zero is that clear about these formulas? Try to understand. So that's why I said very less formulas will be there in this topic. And it will be easy for you if you study like this. Right? So what is the momentum of the photon? Which is H by lambda. And the mass of the photon can I write like this? H by two times of lambda. Absolutely, it is wrong. So now, now what De Broglie said. Okay, we'll come back to that point later. So mass, I said it is zero rest mass. Mass depends on the speed of the particle. Mass depends on the speed of the particle, not the curves and all. Already I said, not the curves and all. So particle size should be very less compared to the dimensions. Particle size, particle mass should be very less. Not the size, mass should be very less. Right? So m which is equal to h by that concept is not that. Now next point what the de Broglie said. What she said about the momentum? Next. Next point. So source is there. From the source particles are coming. Particles are coming in the sense what? They will come automatically. Energy required, right? So he is talking about the energy of the photon. He's talking about the energy of the photon now. It's talking about the energy of the photon. So what is the energy of the photon? We know the momentum of the photon, h by lambda. Right? So we know about the momentum of the photon which is h by lambda. Now energy of the photon, we gave it as E which is equals to h c by lambda. 
energy formula. What he gave? The one photon. The one photon. That is very important. This side to write a point. So energy of one photon will be equals to mc by lambda. Equals to mc by lambda. Now we know from the waves wave nature. So c by lambda will give you what wave nature or not? Definitely wave nature. Speed of the particle and the wavelength of the particle. So I can write according to the waves v equals to f lambda. So f which is equals to can I write it as v by lambda? Right? So cancel it as equation one, equation two. Now v equals to f lambda. We know that so f equals to v by lambda. So instead of this, c is what speed again. Which is equals to v, right? So v by lambda I can write as frequency. So therefore, second equation we can write it as we can rearrange it as v equals to h. So third equation. Very important. V equals to h c by lambda. So this right hand side will give you what? Will give you the wave nature. So c by lambda will give you the wave nature of the light. So f equals to v by lambda. So I can write v equals to h times of frequency. Right? One by one we are discussing. So one first one is about the momentum. This will tell you the wave nature, particle nature. Now momentum. Okay, sir. Light is coming in the sense it is having some energy. How to calculate that energy? V equals to h c by lambda. Now the c by lambda will give you the wave nature of light. So I can write f equals to v by lambda. So e equals to h. Right? So now try to think about this point. Why we are doing all these answers? You can understand now. Okay? Why we did? So consider a photon. Strike the surface. Consider it is a photon. So it will dance slow. So that's why the particle is dancing. So I will strike the surface. And it strike the surface. And this is the first surface. Assume uh, n one. Second surface. Assume it as n b. Clear about the point? And the energy of the photon. So one photon. Only one photon I can say. So it strike the surface. So assume energy of the photon is e. Energy of the photon is e. Right? So energy of the photon is e. And two surfaces. And this is the interface. We know. This is the interface. So n one and two you can take it as a, a refractive index. Okay. So n one and two are shown as refractive index of this medium and this. Medium. Now my question is: So if the light or if the photon enters into the another medium, if the photon, write the question: If the photon enters into n two, enters into n two. What will be the energy of the photon? Or find the energy of the photon. Find the energy of the photon. So tell me what is the energy of the photon? Clear about the question. So two mediums I can set. So in one medium, uh, I have a source here. With that, I produce the photon and strike the surface. I am just going to the other medium. So, what will be the energy in the other medium for that photon? Energy will be constant. So, for this story, this is the example. Energy will be constant for that photon. Why constant? Try to see the point. E equals to h c by lambda. E equals to h c by lambda. Now, if I already said, I think in the previous classes, if the light ray will go from one medium to another medium, what will happen? Wavelength changes, speed changes, frequency constant. Wavelength changes, velocity, speed of the wave changes, then frequency remains constant. On what frequency depends? Frequency depends on the source. Try to write all the points. Frequency depends on the source. So, is it clear? If the medium changes, velocity changes, and the wavelength of the waves changes. But frequency remains constant. If frequency constant, then what about energy? Energy constant. So, if a photon will move from one medium to another medium, what will be constant? Energy will be constant. Find energy of the photon. It remains. It doesn't energy remains constant. 
Energy remains constant. Who will change? Velocity will change. Speed. Speed of the photon. And as well as wavelength will change. Frequency remains constant. So energy of the photons remains constant. So how we discuss all these things? Is that clear about this formula? With this formula we explain all these things. So momentum, energy of what? One photon. If 10 photons are there, you have to multiply with 10. If n photons are there, you have to multiply with n. Right? Clear? Next. So now about photon, we'll discuss for a while and we'll come back to the actual story again. So what is photon actually? We are having some doubt. Okay? So we'll discuss about photon. Properties of photons. Or simply you can write photon. Write it as property of photons. So first property. Photons will move. Photons will move with the speed of light. Yes or no? Basic nonsense point. Photons will go with the speed of light. Why? In that light, that is a part, that is a particle. So if light is moving with 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, photons also will move with 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Right? So photons will move with the speed of the light. Try to write all the points. Okay? So photons will move with the speed of the light. Okay. So now what are the properties satisfied by the light that should be satisfied by the photon also? Yes or no? What are the properties satisfied by the light, satisfied by the photon also? Why is at this point? So I can tell angle of incidence which is equal to angle of reflection. Can I tell? So it is satisfied by the light and that will be satisfied for the photon also. So angle of incidence which is equal to angle of reflection, it will be satisfied for the photons also. Satisfied by the photons also. Right. Next point. So rest mass of the photon. Rest mass of the photon. Photon of photons will be zero always. Rest mass of the photons will be zero always. Why? Because mass depends on very important formula. Mass depends on the speed of the particle. Already I said that is not the carbs and the elements at all, but it depends on the wavelength. Right? So now m which is equal to m naught divided by square root of 1 minus c square by c square. So rest mass of the photons is zero. So with what you can tell that sir? So with m equals to standard formula. So m equals to m naught upon square root of 1 minus c square by c square. So very important formula to calculate the mass of the particles if the particles are moving with the different speeds. So V is what? The speed of the particle. Speed of the particles. C is the speed of we know light. So we have to compare. We have to compare the speed of the particles with the speed of the light. Then this relation will give you the mass of any particle it is moving with some speed right so now here rest mass of the photons will be zero yes if it is at rest it will be zero why because particle only not there then what about mass zero if i switch on what will happen the particle will move with some speed see it will move with some speed if it is moving with some speed then what will happen you have to compare with the speed of the light then what will happen mass will be double what will happen? Mass will be down. Clear about that? So V value if you switch on the source that will increase. C value, speed of the light will be constant. Right? So 1 minus this one. So we will use you some value. So we can calculate the mass of the photon when it is moving, not at rest. Very important point. Next, fourth point. Fourth point. According to deep learning, we are discussing all these things. We can't show all these things. One important point in modern physics. Whatever the scientist said in the book, okay, the same we are discussing, you have to remember in the same way. Proofs generally won't be there in this chapter right? because these are the observations. These are the observations. So, most of you uh, are still now might be some doubts. Sir, P equals H by lambda, what is the proof? P equals H by lambda, sir, how you have written? So, these are all the observations. They did some experiments with that experiments, they got some values, with those values they created the formulas, those formulas we are studying. Clear about that point? Right? 
So don't compare like the previous chapters or whatever the equation you are writing. Uh, so we have, we want that derivation. So here, these are the observations, right? So now the fourth point about the photon. So conservation of photon we can't do. Conservation of photons are not valid. Not valid. Visible? Yes. So conservation of photons not valid. In the sense we can't write, so we can write the conservation of charge. We studied in the first chapter. Likewise, the conservation of photons we can't write. We can't write the conservation of the photons. Next. So for example, for example, if I consider an electron, if I consider an electron, so if I place in electric field, if I place in electric field or if I place in magnetic field, what will happen? So I think electric field, you know, magnetic field later we will get, don't worry about that. So if an electron placed in the electric field, what will happen? Definitely it will move, it will accelerate. And in the point, it will deflect. If, if I place in magnetic field, what will happen? It will deflect. Later we will see how it will be deflected. So if I place in electric field, it will accelerate. So if I place in magnetic field, it will deflect. Now, try to understand, photons can't be charged, first point. Photons can't be charged, we can't charge the photons. Photons can't be charged and uh, photons can't, won't deflect. Photons, we can't charge, so that's why I said can't be charged. So photons won't deflect, photons won't deflect. When placed, when placed in electric and magnetic fields. These are the observations seen by the De Broglie about the photon. So he, is, he tried to charge that photon. He did it. So that photon he tried to place in the electric field and magnetic fields. He, uh, that photon didn't respond. So that's why finally by the observations he said that photon we can charge and we place the photon in the electric and the magnetic fields, it won't deflect. So these are the major observations what the Broglie has observed about the photon. He gave like this. The photons will move, will move with the speed of the light and the angular instance of the photon equals to reflection and rest mass will be zero and conservation of the photons not possible and we can charge and they won't be deflected. Right? So about the point, I think it is easy, these are the observations, we have to study the same, what I am trying to tell, the same points you have to write and we have to uh, analyze that you are there in the de Broglie position and you are doing that experiment. Right? These are the observations. So, okay? So this is about the properties of the photons. Now you have to know first about the photon, then whatever we will study, that we can understand it easily. Okay, now we'll go back to the story. Okay, so what is that? Up to now, what we discussed about energy. What is the formula for energy? It is equals to H C by lambda. Energy of one photon. What is energy of one photon? Which is H C by lambda. So energy of one photon. H C by lambda. So try to write clearly. It is energy of one photon, not n number of photons, one photon. Most of you will be confused here. One photon. If you have number of photons, you have to multiply with n. Already we discussed. Now try to substitute the values. We'll see some something here. E equals h c by lambda. So what is h? I think h value we know minus constant 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 34. Right? So what is c? Speed of light. 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second, right? Times constant. Now you can get the unit also, don't worry about that. So E equals to what I can write? 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 34 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by lambda. Lambda is right in lambda only. So this is in joules. Joules, as I said, right? So H is in joule and C, sorry, H is in SI unit and C also in SI unit. So finally energy also will get in SI unit. Lambda also you have to substitute in SI unit. That is nothing but in meters. 
lambda y are substituted in meters then energy will be joules it's a bigger unit of energy now coming to the point again so energy in joules we can calculate like this energy in joules we can calculate with this we can calculate with this right understand now j joules that is the bigger unit of energy joule is the bigger unit of energy we know now we don't want this bigger unit we have to convert it to the smaller unit of energy why because if one photon came and it struck your hand for example so you can switch on your uh, flashlight of your mobile or any touch light so switch on and place your hand here so what energy uh, what force you can feel two more or two less two less if force is two less how much energy is applied on your hand two less so joule is a bigger unit of energy so that much energy what we there you can see here minus 34 and 8 then we can do for minus uh, uh, around 26 minus 26 two less so for that we are introducing a new unit we are introducing a new unit that is the smaller unit of smaller unit of energy so what is that unit is that is nothing but electron volt What do you mean by that? We will see. Don't worry about that. So, is it okay? Why we are not using this joule? So there is a bigger unit. So here, ten to the power minus something we have. So that's why we are introducing a very smaller unit of energy that is nothing but electron volt. That is nothing but what? Electron volt. Now, what do you mean by that electron volt? We have to see. Simple, simple. What do you mean by this electron volt? In the sense, for example, consider an electron. Electron volt. Name itself tells. Electron volt. Now I take an electron. It's attached initially. Okay, I think we studied in uh, uh, the first chapter. So electron is attached. Electron is attached. Now I am applying some potential difference to this uh, electron. Try to go back to the chapter. I think it's done. It will be easy for you to understand. So I take an electron. Initially it is attached, and I apply some potential difference for this electron. What will happen? Assume here I apply some potential. Uh, for example, uh, at this point uh, potential is zero, and at this point potential is B. Potential I apply. Potential I apply. This is less, and this is higher potential. So electric field always flows from higher potential to lower potential. Okay. So zero is what? Zero volts at this point. And at this point, I apply the potential V. I think you can understand now. So at this point, DP potential surface. At this side, I apply the zero volts. At this side, I apply V volts. V volts. Or else, we can get as five volts. You wish. Don't worry about that. So if I maintain a potential difference, then what will happen? Definitely, electron will move. In which direction it will move? So electric field always from higher potential to lower potential. If you want to draw an electric field. Higher potential to lower potential. Now, if I place a negative charge on particle in the electric field, in which direction it will go? Opposite to the direction of the electric field, so it will move in this direction. Try to understand. It will move in this direction. That is the basic thing we know. Now, come back to this. What is meant by this electron volt? Now, this electron is moving. Who gave that energy? Electron is moving, moving with the constant speed, or it is accelerating. Is accelerating, right? So in the electric field, electrons can accelerate with an acceleration of e q by m, right? So electron can accelerate. So if any particle is accelerating, definitely it should have some energy, or else it can't accelerate. Whatever the particle is accelerating, in a sense, definitely the particle should have some energy, or else it can't accelerate. Try to understand, right? So this electron is accelerating, in a sense, energy gained. From where it came? From this potential difference. Now, what do you mean by the smaller unit of energy? The energy gained by the electrons due to the applied potential difference. We call it as electron volt. Simple. Is it clear? What do you mean by the electron volt? The energy gained. The energy gained by the electron. The energy gained by the electron when placed in the potential difference. Then less than the potential difference we call it as electron volt. 
whatever the potential difference it might be. Now, clear about the point? The energy gained by the electron when placed in the potential difference or by applying some potential difference, that energy we call it as electron volt. That is a smaller unit. So now, one electron volt, I can write as what? What do you mean by one electron volt? This is very small unit, that is just unit. Smaller unit, one electron volt. What is the charge of the electron? 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. One electron volt. So now this charge I placed at some place and we apply the potential of one volt. One electron volt. This is just an example. I applied five volts. With that it will accelerate. Now what do you mean by one electron volt? One electron volt is nothing but that is the potential difference applied to the charge in particle. How much potential difference? That is one. So one volt we apply. One volt we apply on this charge. So that we call as one electron volt which is equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Okay, one electron volt which is equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 in joules. Why I wrote it as joules? Charge in coulombs I have written. So voltage also I have written. This is also I have This is also I have so finally I said we will get it as joule. So one electron volt we can tell it as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 in joules. When if one volt is applied across a charged particle. So now one joule I can write as 1 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 in electron volts. Very 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 important in this chapter. Whatever from now modern physics. So we won't write whatever the things it might be in joules. That is very big unit. So we'll write everything, whatever the chapter from now up to nuclear physics, we'll write in electron volt solely. So that's why we are testing four times in the introduction class. From the next class, it won't be like this. We'll go to the original speed. Okay. So one joule I can write as one upon one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen electron volt. That much smaller thing. That much. If I do this, that will be one joule. Very big. Clear about this point? Right. So now. Okay. So what do you mean by electron volt? Clear about that? If I tell about uh, 10 electron volt, if I tell about 10 electron volt, so tell me one example will you? So if I tell about 10 electron volt, what is this 10 electron volt? What is this then? That is energy or not? So can I write it as energy as 10 electron volt? Is it okay? So what do you understood by this 10 electron volt? For an electron, we apply the potential difference of 10 volts. For an electron, we apply the potential difference of 10 volts. Then with what acceleration, with what acceleration it will take or with what energy it will take? Acceleration we can calculate. So what energy that electron can take? That is 10 electron volt. What energy that electron take? We call it as 10 electron volt. Okay, come back. Come back to the story. So E which is equal to 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 34 into 3 into 10 to the power 18 joules. Come back into electron volt. So I can write now 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 34 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by lambda and the joule we have to convert into what electron volt? So I can write it as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 in electron volt and lambda should be in meter. Is that okay? So I won't write here, you will be confused. So lambda I didn't change, yes or no? So lambda you have to substitute in meters only. Right? So what is this E value? So do this calculation part and I think you will get 12.4 into if you do this, 6.64 into 3 into 1.6, standard constant value. So we can write directly, so we can calculate. So remaining things 34, 26, how much is that? So that will be 10 to the power minus 7, right? So 34 plus 8, 26, so 26 plus 19, yes, plus minus 7, right? Divided by lambda in meters and in electron. Very, very, very important problem to calculate the energy of the photon. So now photon will be in meters. Photon will be in uh, the wavelength in meters. So we have to 
convert. So convert that. So what I can write D equals to twelve point four into ten to the power minus seven. For example, lambda will be nine strongs. Lambda is a nine strong. So what I can write? So I can write it as lambda convert meters into nine strongs. It will be ten to the power minus ten, right? So lambda into ten to the power minus ten in nine strongs in electron volts. So E, which is equals to twelve point four. Into 10 cube, right? So it is in 10 cube. So I can write it as 124 double zero divided by lambda, lambda in angstroms in electron volts. So if the question is in a lambda not in angstroms, if it is in a nanometer, so E which is equals to 124 nanometers, 10 will be reduced 10 to the power minus 9. So it will be 1240 by lambda in nanometers in electron volts. So this is about The photon and how to what is the relation between wave nature and particle nature and how to calculate the energies. Right? We will continue in the next class.